Hi guys, welcome back to Demetra's Dishes. So today we're going to make a chocolate brioche and I'm going to make mine in this really nice decorative uh, bunt pan. Uh, if you don't have a bunt pan, you can just make it in two loaf pans. That'll work great. I'll put all the options on my website, www.demetrasdishes.com. But I've made the brioche dough already in a previous video, so please check that out. Um, so I, the only reason I'm not making it all over again is so I can kind of keep the video a little short. It's sort of a long process, but here it is. It's beautiful, rich, um, cakey slash, slash bready dough. It's really delicious. If you never had it, it's sort of like uh, almost like a Danish. It's kind of like a bread and a cake. It's really good. So get the recipe and make double batches because you want to keep some in your freezer. But we're going to need some uh, a batch of the dough. We're going to need some all-purpose flour to kind of work with on the bench. We're going to need some semi-sweet chocolate chips. I'm going to grind up semi-sweet chocolate chips in my food processor. If you have a bar of semi-sweet chocolate, go ahead and use that. This is just what I had on hand, so that's what I'm using. You can also use dark chocolate if you like, or milk chocolate, or even white chocolate, whatever you prefer. And then we're going to, cover, we're going to dress this or glaze it with a beautiful orange glaze and some chocolate ganache, and for that, we're going to use um, some orange juice, fresh, or fresh orange juice, and some confectioner sugar. And I'm missing my chocolate, my chocolate with my heavy whipping cream that we're going to use to make this ganache, but we'll get to that later. Let me put this on my workspace. Before I do that, actually, let me grind my chocolate chips. And this is a really cool way to do it if you have chocolate chips and you need uh, ground up chocolate for a recipe or chopped up chocolate. You can just put your chips in a little food processor and chop, ch uh, grind them all up and it's quick, easy, and um, you got yourself a chocolate filling. So this is pretty much the consistency you want to have even if you're chopping the chocolate up. You want, you want to have some really fine crumbs and some bigger chunks. Now, you can also do half chocolate, half nuts, if that's what you want, like chocolate pecan, that's a really nice combination, chocolate walnut, really, you could add some cranberries in here, the sky's the limit, you can make this bread as whatever you like, put whatever you want in there, whatever you really, really enjoy eating. I'm going to put some flour over here because this is a very sticky dough, but you don't want to overdo it, this is going to stay pretty sticky, I'm just kind of make it easier to work with. A little more flour on top. So you can use a rolling pin. I did take out a rolling pin but I actually didn't need it. Or just your hands. And just spread this out in, in a, as big of a rectangle as you can get it out to. I'm kind of using my cutting board as a guide. But spread it out because the more surface area you have, the more filling you're going to have. And you'll see what I mean when we're done when we roll it up. So now I'm just going to get the zest of this orange. Uh, you can leave it out if you don't like it or substitute any other citrus zest that you prefer in here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to dump all of our chocolate on here and this is a cup of ground up chocolate. Just like that. And then just spread it out all over the dough and now we're just going to roll it all up and then I'll get the rest of the zest on here. Now I should have done that first but I kind of forgot. I'm going to get some melted butter and I'm just going to butter my um, bunt pan really well and also dust some um, flour on here so that way this comes out, comes out um, really easily. Alright so I have my melted butter here and I'm just going to butter the inside of the pan really really well so that way um, the beautiful brioche detaches easily. Now if you have um, baking spray, go ahead and spray that in here if you really like. But um, the butter is just going to really add some more delicious flavor to it. And for some extra insurance, I'm just going to put some flour in here and then dust it off just to make sure that it releases easily. I'm just going to tap it all up. Now I'm just going to take my beautiful log of chocolate filled brioche and just put it in here and pinch the edges together. 
and I'm going to cover this with plastic wrap and let it sit in a warm place until it puffs up really nicely. And in the meantime, I just preheated my oven to 400 degrees and when it rises nicely, we're going to put it in and we're going to bake it, but I'll show you before we do that. Alright, so the dough has been sitting on the side for about 25 minutes and it's nice and puffy and it's ready to go into the oven. I've preheated my oven to 400 degrees. I've made this egg wash here by just beating one egg with a few tablespoons of water. Now, as soon as it goes in the oven, I'm going to reduce the temperature to 350, 350 degrees, and I'm going to let it cook for between 35 to 40 minutes. Um, I'll know when it's ready when uh, a thermometer goes in goes in the center and reads about 190 degrees or it'll emit a nice hollow sound or um, when I put in a toothpick it'll come out uh, clean and I'll show you what it looks like when it's ready. Okay so my chocolate brioche came out of the oven it took 45 minutes to bake at 350 degrees and it is looking beautiful. What you want to do when it comes out of the oven is take a knife and just run it around the pan so that way you can loosen up any pieces that have kind of stuck so that way hopefully it'll detach um, much easier that way. So we did that. Now we're going to make the toppings. We're going to glaze this once we take it out and it cools a little bit more with a chocolate ganache sauce and then an orange glaze. So what I did was I put some chocolate chips in here with some really hot um, heavy whipping cream that I heated up and now I'm going to make the orange glaze and the orange glaze is basically two ingredients freshly squeezed orange juice from the orange that we zested and I have the juice here and just some confectioner sugar it's really simple you can do this and um, basically make lemon glaze like this with um, lemon juice and confectioner sugar or lime zest and get it the list goes on and on now it, we just want it, want it to be really runny and um, what we do is just I just add a little bit at a time of the juice and I keep mixing it until it absorbs and it's going to become nice and smooth. So I'm going to keep adding a little bit at a time. So this is the consistency you want it to be at. You want it to be really nice and runny but also nice and smooth and you can make as much or as little as you want of this depends on how much you want to drizzle on your um, brioche but we're going to do this and some chocolate let's see looking the same way if the chips have softened yes they have all you have to do is just put some hot heavy whipping cream over some chocolate and then you're going to see how it turns into a beautiful silky chocolate ganache and you could add flavorings to this too. You could add a little bit of vanilla extract, but I just kept it simple because there's so much flavor in the brioche. All right, here we go. We have a beautiful cake platter. And we're going to, hopefully this will work. Let's see. It usually does work. Let's tap on it. Ah, there we go. Beautiful. Look at that. That looks better than from any bakery except ours <laughs> and it just looks so pretty. Nobody will believe that you made this gorgeous cake. It's not a cake, it's a bread, but it's, I would put it in a cake category. It's so good. And now just drizzle the orange glaze all over it like that. And then ideally you should let this cool a little bit more because it's kind of melting the glaze, but that's fine. But if you let it cool completely, then the glaze sort of, instead of getting absorbed into the bread, it'll sort of set more and be um, less translucent. It's kind of becoming really opaque. And then on top of that, some chocolate. How beautiful is that? brew up a pot of coffee or a beautiful pot of tea and serve this and you will be everybody's favorite person <laughs> anyway so i'm going to put the recipe on my website the link is going to be in the box down below as always www.demetriusdishes.com make this for your friends for your family give it as gifts because who doesn't like delicious dessert as a gift 
Um, and then post your comments down below, down below. Let me know how it turned out for you, how you liked it. Let me cut into this and show you what it looks like inside. Look at that. There's still steam coming out. Beautiful. Now, ideally when you're making it at home, let this cool completely before you serve it. It's better that way um, it's not, it tastes best when it's just like room temperature and cooled. It even tastes good cold. But I'm going to drizzle a little bit more of this glaze on top. Make myself a pot, a cup of tea, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, everyone.